Hey everyone, uh, Don Rasmussen here at Quartermaster Tax and Ryan Cook, my uh, trusty uh, partner. <laughs> something, yeah. <laughs> yeah, something like that, sidekick. Yeah. And uh, so we're back again this week here, and we're going to be talking about uh, something that you probably heard a little bit about in the news, and that is called the BOI uh, and the FinCEN, two acronyms you may or may not have heard before. Uh, the FinCEN being the Financial Crimes Enforcement uh, of our country. And what was interesting, Ryan, is that um, I didn't realize this until I did a little research, but the United States is actually late to the game that most developed countries around the world already require what we're going to talk about today. Absolutely, yeah. So um, most um, uh, powerhouses um, around the world have already implemented something like BOI, and we're late to the game in it. And so it's rattling a lot of cages right now. It's causing a lot of confusion and even frustration amongst uh, small business owners. But it's really a kind of a common practice around the world. And so we're here to kind of talk about it a little bit more and hopefully clear up some uh, confusion or frustration as yeah. far as that goes. So. so really what they're wanting to do is to curb, at least that's what they say, they want to curb uh, money laundering and criminal activities because, believe it or not, criminals do use uh, businesses like LLCs to conduct their nefarious activities. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so they're trying to crack down on this, like Don was uh, referencing, basically to um, keep criminals from uh, doing uh, fraudulent activities, things like that, creating um, uh, entities and holding companies that they can hide their name from that the government cannot see into, and just create all sorts of nefarious activities yeah. as far as that goes. You know, and, and we've all seen the, the TV programs talking about shell companies and things like that. That's really what they're trying to address. So the BOI is the beneficial ownership is what they're wanting you to report. Now, that means if you set up an LLC, for any purpose, you know, on um, social media and Facebook and Instagram and all the different ones out there, all these different groups are out there, YouTube videos are saying, hey, set up an LLC. And uh, now when you do that or you have done that historically, because whether you already have one existing or you're going to set up one, you are mandated to, uh, to make sure you report beneficial ownership. Absolutely. <clears throat> so, Don, um, one of the big questions that we've heard a lot is, um, what if I started my business? Well, first of all, let me ask this question. When does this go into effect? So one effect January 1st of this year. Okay. So you have until the end of the year to get it completed. Mm -hmm. Now, I wouldn't wait till last minute. Mm -hmm. uh, I would make sure that you, and we're going to talk further a little bit about what that looks like, but the reality is you have from January 1st of 2024 to the end of 2024 to make sure this is uh, done. Awesome. And what if we already had a business started before this happened? Do we still have to file that? Absolutely. Yeah, because any LLC that's ever been created, if you created it for um, just a little side hustle, mm -hmm. if you decide to, to buy real estate, it's got to be reported. Yeah. And that's a big thing. And there, from what I understand, there's some pretty, uh, pretty heavy penalties if you don't comply to this. I believe yeah. it was around... Five hundred dollars a day, civil, civilly, like a civil penalty of five hundred dollars a day Correct. if you don't file it. And there's even a consequence. Criminal charges. Yeah, yeah, criminal charges, um, imprisonment, things like that yeah. as well. Yeah. So it's it's pretty it's pretty intense. So you definitely want to file it. Um, but you know the big question also is is who has to file it? There's a lot of confusion about who has to file it. So could you go through that just a little bit on there? Yeah. So if you have at least twenty five percent ownership in an LLC, uh, so let's say you have um, multiple. Uh, owners inside the LLC, uh, like a group maybe invested into real estate, whatever the case is, everyone who has at least 25% ownership or greater has to be in this document or this filing. Now, the question comes up, you know, if I, if I by myself, as my wife, do we need to do it? Absolutely. Or we had another case come up um, where somebody put their minor child on as ownership, gave mm -hmm. them 90% ownership of the LLC. So what happens in that scenario the, the child doesn't have to until they, they become an adult, uh, but the parent has to, mm. So gotcha. even though they have less than 25% ownership. <clears throat> wow. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's um, pretty crazy. Now, uh, what about 501c3s? Yeah. Do they have to file? They don't have to file this, no, correct? No, no, yeah. no. Yeah. There's yeah. actually some exemptions. So the, the FinCEN came out with the rules that there's small business and large business, or what they call large business. Mm -hmm. So if you have more than 20 employees and $5 million or greater in the most recent year of revenue, you don't have to file this because you're considered a large business. If you fall below that, let's say you have 25 employees, mm -hmm. but your revenue is not at least $5 million, you have to file. Okay. Gotcha. And a lot of things, um, 
one of the questions that we also hear a lot is, is, is this something that we have to file every year? Um, you don't, actually. You don't have to file every year. You only have to file if something changes. You move addresses, you change partnerships, something in your business structure changes, then you do have to refile. That is correct. And you only have 30 days from that change to make that. So keep in mind. Now, if you're setting up a brand new LLC here in this year, uh, you are required within 90 days mm -hmm. to file that. So the, the time frame is not the whole year. You have 90 days. So I want to make sure I clarify that, that if it's prior to January of 24, mm -hmm. you have the whole year. If you did it any time after January of 24, you have 90 days. So who goes on there? If you are, of course, the one who set up the LLC, when I say set up, I'm the owner, as an example, then I'm going to be on that BOI filing. But if I have my attorney or a paralegal who's actually doing the filing, they have to be on there as well. Not necessarily as a ownership or ownership interest, but you have to make sure that they're on there as filing the LLC. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, that's good. Um, yeah, so like I said, you know, this is something that um, a lot of our clients that call in, um, you know, some of them aren't even aware that this is been, that this change has even taken place. Some of them are. And, uh, and like I said, there's just a lot of confusion around it. And so, you know, we, we want to make sure that our clients and, and those uh, future clients definitely have some clarity around this. And uh, we have a solution to be able to take care of this as we well. Do. Absolutely. Yeah, we've actually, one of the questions that comes up, and, and, mm -hmm. and just to kind of back up a little bit, the, it's called mm -hmm. the Corporate Transparency Act. That's what's created all this here. But one of the things is because, um, you know, working with CPAs and AICPA, one of the things that's come out, and even uh, some of the E&O companies, uh, liability companies from the uh, CPAs have said that if you uh, are giving advice on this here or you're filing, that you very well could be crossing the line of practicing law without a license. So what we've done is we have a great uh, attorney group that we work with. Uh, that we've developed a relationship, or we've, let me say this, we've had a relationship with them for about five years, um, who's actually helped create a portal for you to be able to go in there and they will file everything and make sure everything is compliant, that you're not missing anything, very reasonable. Now you could do this on your own. You could go to uh, the website, the BOI website, do everything you're on your own, but if you wanna make sure everything is done correctly, the T's are crossed and I's are dotted, very nominal um, charge to do so, and they make sure everything is compliant. That's awesome, that's awesome. So this is something that's probably gonna stay around forever. It is, now I will say this here, there was a lawsuit that was filed by the National Small Business Association, and right now it's, um, been, there's been a put a hold on it. Now that doesn't mm -hmm. mean it's gonna go away, it's mm -hmm. actually already been appealed by the government, and knowing the mm -hmm. government, um, they have a very strong case on why it needs to be filed. The, the premise behind the National Small Business Association, Ryan, was that it was being, um, that you were, being, you were uh, looking at small business owners only, making them do it instead of all businesses. Yeah. And yeah. so they felt like it was very discriminatory yeah. uh, and a little far reaching. Now, I'll give you my opinion. I don't, you know, I understand the, the validity of it to help protect uh, the money laundering and the, any type of uh, terrorist activities and things like that. I get that. But the reality is, um, it is a little far reaching. Uh, now, uh, keep in mind too, it's not just FinCEN who's gonna have uh, access to this. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be the IRS, the IRS yep. yeah. uh, state authorities, <clears throat> uh, law enforcement. So, and, and here's the thing, mm -hmm. <laughs> this is what always gets me. It's like um, uh, having a concealed carry. Yeah. You know this, Ryan, mm -hmm. we both have concealed carries. Yep. The criminals don't get concealed carries. Yeah. They're, they're not going down and getting gun permits. Yeah. It's going to be the same thing here. The criminals mm -hmm. are still not going to do this. They're going to, you know, just blow it off. They're not going to go down and file. Mm -hmm. And what, I mean, what is the government going to do? Yeah. Other than if they do find out they have one, is to find them. Yeah, it's just like any other scenario. The law abiding citizen is the one who's actually probably going to get. The, the, the biggest brunt of this change yep. and the criminals are going to keep doing the criminal activity and there's not <laughs> going to be a whole lot that you know they can do um, but it makes some people in government sleep well at night I guess thinking <laughs> yes, that they're doing that, that so it's job yeah. security yeah, yeah, yeah exactly sure, exactly sure. but in the meantime um, this is something that is in the pipeline it's here we have to deal with it there's nothing right now that we can do to change what's going on mm -hmm. so the best thing to do is really prepare and to get um, all your ducks in a row, eyes dotted, T's crossed, 
And um, like I said, you know, that's something that we can help with as well. You can also file that as well if you'd like to, but if you want to make sure, then we can definitely help with that. Yeah. So I would just encourage you not to wait too late. You know, like I said, this lawsuit has been filed. The likelihood is it's going to be overturned by some uh, judge out there mm -hmm. uh, just saying that the, the government needs to do this for the security of our country and uh, for the financial crimes unit, they're, they're wanting to stay on top of this as well. So I hope this has been helpful. You know, um, if you have any further questions, certainly always feel free to reach out to Quartermaster Tax. You can go to our quartermastertax.com, drop us an email. You can also call our office at 704-490-4111. Again, at 704-490-4111. And make sure you know that if you want to take advantage of our, our firm that we're working with, Probity, uh, that you can click on the link below and you can actually get that all done in a very compliant way. Again, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, Ryan, thanks so much. Uh, it's been a great conversation about new compliance issues. Mm -hmm. And uh, until next time, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.